How you doing? I'm Nick Upton here with the Restaurant Finance Monitor at the 2017 Restaurant and Finance Development Conference. I'm here with uh, Mark Wasileski from TD Bank. Uh, um, you've been doing a lot of these great consumer surveys, uh, these annual surveys on, on what's going on mm -hmm. out in the, the restaurant space. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about that a little bit, but sure. first, can you introduce yourself and tell us what you do at uh, TD Bank? Sure. Uh, Mark Wasilewski. I'm head mm -hmm. of the uh, Restaurant Franchise Group at TD Bank. Mm -hmm. So um, we provide senior debt financing for mm -hmm. uh, for restaurants, for franchises, and for large independents. Great. Yeah. And yeah, let's talk about that survey a little bit. Um, I was looking through it, and it seems like all the consumer sentiments are really high. Everyone's super happy. Yeah. Uh, everyone wants to eat out more, but, but traffic is a little shaky. Uh, what's going on out there from your perspective? Sure. I think that um, you know, there's changing demographics, technology, mm -hmm. you know, the millennials, Generation Z, Generation Y, X. Um, <laughs> they all have different preferences. Yeah. They all have different... Um, they all have different tastes, mm -hmm. um, and I think things are changing at a pace that people aren't really used to. Yeah. Um, I think the quick serve space continues to do well. Um, you know, they have made tremendous investments mm -hmm. in technology, uh, delivery, um, and and their menu options have yeah. moved towards organic and clean food, and they've done a great job. Yeah. Um, I think in the um, on the fast casual space, it's been a little bit of a more difficult role mm -hmm. for them. I think they've had a little bit more trouble yeah. uh, with younger people uh, and making younger people interested in their product. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think they're getting there, but that, that space has had some difficulty. Yeah. W why do you think that space uh, has had so much difficulty? I mean, it was hot and exciting uh, not, <laughs> not very, yeah. very recently. It, it was. Oh. It was. I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, there are a lot of... Uh, of, of, of of alternatives out there yeah. right now. There are a lot of very small boutique firms. Mm -hmm. uh, millennials, the younger people enjoy experience. They like experiences. Yeah. They're not as likely to buy a house. They're backpacking across Europe. They're doing all these things. So <laughs> yeah. they like that uniqueness. And you don't get the uniqueness from a fast casual chain that you yeah. might get from, you know, a special boutique uh, mm -hmm. vegan, f you know, restaurant down the street. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, and then the innovation on the QSR side that keeps people coming in and, it and does. obviously the, the value for you know yeah. saving money for that backpacking trip, right? That's right, that's <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So how does uh how does that mismatch between consumer sentiment and the economy uh change your thesis when you're when you're investing in or when you're uh, helping restaurants uh, get sure. financing? It it does. I mean, look, mm -hmm. we're a bank, uh, yeah. we're senior lenders, uh, you know, so we're on the conservative side of the yeah. spectrum, top of the credit food chain. Yeah, of course. Um, so we're we're very careful with our money, with mm -hmm. our funds, and where we invest. And and so, you know, like any investor, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to overweight and underweight in certain in yeah. certain areas, uh, and we're we're probably overweight uh, on our outlook for QSR, and mm -hmm. we're going to underweight our fast casual exposures. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And um, does that change uh, what kind of investments you're, you're going to be making, or sorry, what kind of uh, credit deals you're going to be making, or is it going to be kind of, uh, is that just the overweighting and underweighting? I, I guess it, it's it specifically how. Yeah, how it, it, it really is. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not that difficult to manage yeah. because you direct your sales force and your sales efforts to the places where you want to put your yeah, money. Makes sense. And that's where <laughs> it is. And, and it, it's not that we're out of the fast casual space. Yeah. We're always going to look for the best operators, yeah. the strongest operators. Uh, because even if the brand itself mm -hmm. is struggling a little bit, if you have the good operators, yeah. they're the ones who are going to come out on top. Yeah. And do you think even in this environment, a good bet is generally a good bet? Like if you can find these diamonds in, in a, a rough brand, uh, yeah. is it going to succeed? I think so. Okay. Um, you know, when you're looking at a well-established brand, someone mm. who's been around for many, many years, it's really difficult to kill that brand, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. brands are cyclical, economics mm -hmm. are cyclical. Um, and, and those things aren't always in sync. So yeah. I think if you have, if the franchisor is aware and they understand, a lot of them make material changes, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen that with a number of franchisors yeah. lately, uh, make significant changes uh, yeah. at the top of the house. Um, you know, I, I think most of them know what they need to do, yeah. it, but it takes time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks so much for being a part of this and thanks for coming to the show. Uh, this has been very insightful. My pleasure. Take Thank care, you. Mark. Thanks.